And we are back with our final game of the day. CGA taking on Rascal Jesters. And Rascal Jesters, well, I don't know if they've really been the joker of this league. I don't know. They just want to see everything burn by messing everyone's predictions up. Is, is that kind of the energy that they're bringing here today? We'll have to find out. Obviously, it also depends on which version of CGA gets brought up today because they, they picked up two wins. One against Burning Court, very impressive play, work to say. But against V3, a very, very rough game. RFC, <laughs> how are you feeling about this matchup specifically? Because Ross Jesus haven't been looking good either, but CGA, I don't know, man. They could flip anything. I'm going to be honest with you, this one, this is a game where I'm happy to just watch it play out because I have no clue what on earth they're going to be looking at there. I think, you know, you put it perfectly there, right? Uh, the, the fact that Roscoe Jester's we don't know what they're doing. And with CGA too, it's a bit like, well, um, what's, what's the mean that's going around? Can't guarantee anything, no matter how big yeah. the lead they have is. They just can't close it out. So when you've got two teams who are both struggling right now, it's <laughs> anything goes. Yeah, and, and you say they build up these leads. They were ahead at 15 against DFM. They've got the best, mm -hmm. well, the, sorry, the largest goal lead at 15 of about 1.5k almost. But they're not closing out games. Echo, is that like big alarm bells for you? Or is it that, yeah. you know what, yeah, maybe some other teams kinda, can do it better? It, it kind of is. It's just like, with CJ, I feel like, as well, that they're kind of just like with their brothers in Blu-ray, with Burning Core as well. Every lane, also, you know, <laughs> they're not only flipping games, right? They're internally flipping as well. Who's going to carry? Like, other than, I would say, yeah. Hybrid, who is almost like consistently always performing, they're all, their whole roster tends to be kind of very hit or miss base it's like either they're gonna pop off and it's like damn look at this guy or like maybe don't look at this thing uh, let's keep going like uh, uh, let's get out of here yeah and, and rascal just is in terms of pick adapting to the meta i i don't know how i truly feel about it. they still play the jinx they're one of the teams that are keeping it old school still they've picked a load of random supports so like they played bard at one point which i, I guess i say random in, in like inverted commas like bard can be played but I don't well, know. Not, never, again. Holy, done it. <laughs> never again. See, secret, secret was uh, somebody needs to check that man's bank account on that game. The, the bar needs to be banned by Roscoe Jesters because secret. Okay, to be fair, secrets played it elsewhere before. I think played in spring and it looked good there. But this, this split in summer, that bar still gives me nightmares watching it. Yeah, and, and I think one big question mark for me, go, going back to the point about CJ getting those early leads, is that Roscoe Jesters felt pretty low in terms of proactivity in the earlier stage of the game. I remember we watched them versus V3 and it was a really slow game because they just decided to not push advantages and versus CGA, surely that is going to make this game very rough for them to handle. Well, I think back to the Burning Core game where Rascal just has played Burning Core because they almost won that and you know, like Echo was kind of saying, CG and Burning Core aren't that different in the way they sometimes play, right? They get leads, um, any lane can carry, uh, but both teams struggle to close out a little bit, right? And if I'm not confident that 10 out of 10 times, Burning Core wins that game. And likewise, I carry that over to CGA. If you let it go late and I know's on a hyper carry, you know, Soul's on a hyper carry, maybe you don't win that. So that's one of the reasons why, Jerry, like I said, I, I'm not calling a prediction on this one here. I don't know how it goes. I'm just here to watch this one play out because, yeah, I, I'm not confident in either team right now. And any, any particular picks that you want to see echo? For me, I really want to see the Olaf back for Nap for CGA. I feel like it's been a really strong pick. Are there any others that you really want to see come out of CGA? I think hybrids S real is something that, like, we got, a, we got a little bit of a taste of last time around. I was like, I saw some of the clips here. I was like, oof, like, Oof, okay, like chill out, goddamn. I'd like to see that come back. I'm not gonna lie, I'd like to see that. Indeed, and then on the flip side, RMC, any particular picks from Russell Jesters that you're really wanting to see return to the rift? I liked Ino's kill. Um, I thought it, it works really well. And specifically, if Olaf is off the table for Nap, or you know that Nap is picked, I would like to see Vigar come back for a recap. It was one of his most played champions in spring. Very effective champion, created tons of zone control for Soul to pop off here. And I think that's something they've really been missing so far in, in summer. So, yeah, take the Olaf off the table and I'd love to see Vigar make a comeback. Yeah, and both these teams, they go to the game. You know, they, they don't finish the games early. It's not a speed run, even though CJ likes the speed run first 15 minutes. It doesn't end 
quickly, you know. So there is going to be that capability for Russell just to have a little bit more scaling. As you said, things like the Kale could become very prominent in this game. Looking at this, though, the mid-jungle duo, I feel like it's a big point of contention for a lot of teams. But for these teams as well, obviously Russell just is notorious for their bot lane. CGA, Kassin, such a good pickup here. Could they potentially just start winning through that mid jungle and really crush the side of Russell Jesters? For uh, CGA, pardon me? Yeah, could CGA, because obviously Kassin has been playing really well. Um, I think that, yes, Hybrid has had a lot of attention on who's been carrying, but I feel like Kassin has also been a bit notorious on how well they can play. Do you feel like that's going to be a real problem for Russell Jesters to deal with? Potentially. Like uh, Echo said, you know, CGA, anybody can pop off. We've seen Kaito pop off. I think we've seen Kaito pop off more than we've seen Recap pop off. So, yeah, uh, I think Kaito and Kasin, there is the potential to do that. Rather than the mid-jungle, though, I'm looking more at the jungle matchup. I think Hachimicha has shown a much better understanding of early pathing than Kasin has. And Kasin can be rather hit or miss. So, I, I think the jungle is going to be more influential than the, the mid matchup there. Okay, well, with that, we are going to be getting into drops of the last game of the day. CGA vs. Russell Jester's Echo KO RMC for the last time today. Let's go. All right, RMC, let, let's close this thing out already. Take a look at the bands here. Rascal Jester taking Ari and Ezreal off the table. Well, that sucks for me. I'm not going to be seeing hybrids Ezreal today, nor tomorrow, or for a while. And CGA on the flip side taking out the Seraphin and the Renata Glask. Actually, any surprising fans there so far? No, I think it's fairly standard. Uh, a little bit surprised that Recap's the one banning the um, Corky here, uh, because mm. Recap played it back in day one. Kaito hasn't yet, but I, I think it's just a generally strong pick. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. we won't see the Ezreal, but there's still a chance for Zeri. I remember Zeri's uh, hybrid Zeri back in spring, but CGA actually take that off themselves. Yeah, taking that one away. Seeing the Wukong ever so present being locked in here. No real surprise there. Go to the hands of Hachimecha as their first pick and you know it's always a try true and trusted first pick keeps those cards pretty close to the table you know that as soon as you see him most likely going to be going to that jungle no real surprise yeah and if it was any other team echo at this point i feel like cga might just go you know the senna tom kench answer because that seems to be mm -hmm. the ljl preferred answer here uh, the alternative to me is lucian nami but we've already seen that in the ljl sometimes that lane doesn't pan out instead cga actually just matching instantly with the Viego here, once again, that handshake. And that feels like CJ just doesn't have any particular power picks that they feel like they're prioritizing. They just want to counter pick as much as possible here. Yeah, that's fair too, right? It's definitely a, definitely a valid strategy. But speaking of things to pick up, actually Hover and the Aphelios here are going to get locked. Okay, okay, we might be in for something. I, mean, I just expect Soul and Secret to kind of... Actually, Senna's open for the first time. Uh, I believe this entire season against Soul and Secret, so they don't go with that. And I was thinking nope. <laughs> we're just going to see Jinx answer uh, Aphelios. Caitlyn, Echo, Caitlyn, we've oh not seen her in a hot God. minute. She was the original most abusive bot lane over Lucian, over Callista, over Samira, and Roscoe Jesters. It feels like they're really trying to change things up as they lock that in along with that karma. Yep. Meanwhile, CGA hovering the Nautilus here, actually, definitely going to be allowed to punish out these more squishers bot lanes. So, i got to get that locked in, actually. Okay. This, dude, this bot lane is looking, it's looking dicey right now. I'm a, I'm getting a little, I'm getting, it's going to get heated. I wish Dicey was back in last game, yeah. but Dicey isn't. And we'll have to see how this plays out. For sure, it's it's very volatile um, with that Nautilus here, and I think jungle intervention will be required on the side of CGA if Soul and Secret play this right here. And now it's down to the soul lanes for both of these teams. And we kind of touched on the mid lane a little bit, but I want to talk about top lane because I feel like Nap and Aino have played a lot of carries here, a lot of GP uh, Kale coming through for Aino here. And for Nap, the Olaf that Jerry will mention, but the Lilia and Gwen as well. And so it surprises me once again that we're seeing the bands come out on the side of the people who play it. Aino is yeah. banning the Kale and Nap is banning the Gwen. These are champions that they have played. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I have no words for that. Honestly, I'm I'm just as shocked as you are, to be honest. Going getting banned. Sedge being taken off the table here as well. Staple a little top. No one pick. You know, get that off the board. No one's surprised there with this final ban coming out here from Rescue Just. Then we get a little bit of a better idea as to what both teams are looking to do here. Vernon, not quite too sure just yet who they want to take off the board here for CGA. It's going to be the gameplay. Okay. That's respectable. 
think it, Nap hasn't played Gangplank. It's yeah. Idol who plays Gangplank. <laughs> are we sure that these genes are on the right sides? I am so confused here, Echo. And I'm a little bit worried, actually, for Ino because you don't have counterpick on the blue side here. And for CGA, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up leaving counterpick for Nap in that top lane, you know, pick something like an R. Oh, Ari's already banned. So, yeah, Swain, something that's blindable in the mid lane here. And Olaf is on the table. Lilia is on the table. So, Rasu Jesters can't just blindly pick Horn or some sort of tank when you have the potential of running up into an Olaf Lilia who'd absolutely wreck you and dive past you in teamfights. Yeah, listen, Rascal just they're just like, yo, we we, we have to handy we're we're too good. We have to handicap ourselves with CGA here, ban our own picks. That's that's the narrative that I'm going with this time around. That must, <laughs> must that must be the reason. Surely that must be the reason. But the Ziggs is gonna get locked in here for this mid lane here for a recap. We're gonna be interesting to see how he's gonna look to uh, to pilot that one. Yeah, and for Rascal Jesters here, Recap did play uh this Ziggs just uh was it last week yeah on sunday against sengoku and it didn't look amazing oh my goodness echo they actually oh, okay oh they blinded the town and God. they kind of have to because now you don't have sufficient damage to really just run an all damage a damage overload composition so you had to kind of go for that tank and to me this is free for cga at this point like you can pick whatever scaling pick you'll want here i actually would li love to see the li lilia pardon me right uh -huh. here uh to pair up but yeah sure camille i mean that's an older top lane pick but it checks out uh you know trogath are on her queue effectively here build divine sunderer and scion can't match her <laughs> I, I think cg are more than happy with how this drop has panned out yeah i mean it, it's flip city it's it's flip city honestly that's all you can really say right the the bands a little bit flippy there felt like we're, we're taking out our own picks here that the enemy team has never played the picks themselves little surprise as well but i'm feeling like so far we're probably favoring cga right about now draft wise uh, yes 100 i think in the current meta as well scaling is very important the durability patch has made it such that trying to win out early uh it's difficult and oftentimes you're not going to be able to crush and get a big enough lead especially not against the team which has the biggest goal difference at 15 out of all the teams in the league, even above Sengoku, the number one team, even above DFM, the emperors and international representatives, Roscoe Jesters have decided to play this on nightmare difficulty here. And they've got to get a lead in their bot lane on this Caitlyn Karma. We've seen it so many times with Lush uh, Lushinami. If you don't get that lead, you fall behind, you're not impactful. Caitlyn Karma are th is basically that, but even harder. I will say that I do feel like in this bot lane, especially obviously you have that initial pressure that's coming out with the Nautilus itself, right? But when you are this very immobile, you see that is the feelings, especially in the early game, you're very susceptible to being just punished because of that fact and just being poked out. And with, with that Karma and Caitlyn, that's a very real possibility. I don't know. I got to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree with that. On paper, Caitlyn Karma should absolutely run this lane. The, the way an Aphelios lane runs in general, it depends on what guns you have, obviously, right? Red, white, don't mm. fight. But I'd argue Gravitum is actually more dangerous in lane. And with the Nautilus uh, Aphelios especially here, that's why I call it volatile. Because if you land the hook and you have Gravitum, uh, if you've got the, the Chakrams ready to go as well, you can absolutely rip a Caitlyn and Karma to shred. So it's about playing around those windows. And Nemo and Hybrid, while they are a strong bot lane i don't feel like they're as strong as a duo i've hyped up soul and secret since spring as a duo together and i expect them to be able to perform better in that 2v2 situation so uh, I'm, I'm hoping rascal jesters gets enough of a lead and i don't just mean one kill i'm talking like the entire turret pre-14 minutes multiple kills like a 2k gold lead off that ball mm. lane because if not come later Caitlyn's range isn't as strong into the Aphelios and, you know, with the risk of Camille just diving the back line here, there's really very few ways of protecting this Caitlyn in team fights. Yeah, I, I think just pivoting over to Caitlyn actually is going to be huge because, uh, not Caitlyn, Camille, excuse me, too many C's, honestly, because <laughs> if Camille gets on top of the Caitlyn, the Karma, anyone, that Q it's gonna hurt like it is gonna do some damage and just it, honestly just to anyone really on the side of rascal jesters if they are able to get that head it's it's gonna look it's gonna look dangerous that's all i gotta say it is and for rascal jesters i think with the way their comp is operating right now you've got six you've got karma you've got caitlin you're trying to play at range for the most part get that poke down and cg yeah. don't really have an answer to poke nobody on their side is going to be able to poke back so for rascal jesters right now it's a lot about controlling that space controlling that zone and most importantly, Echo, controlling that vision 
Because as we mm-hmm. saw from last game, if you don't have vision control, it's very easy to get flanked. And for CGA, they're looking at, you know, Nautilus depth charge to potentially force the engaged Camille to look for that flank as well. And if they can, CGA should be able to roll these fights. It's really a question of just, can CGA find these fights? Can they force Roscoe Jesters to actually fight them instead of standing half a screen away, queuing over walls, queuing from bushes, etc.? Yeah, and I feel the reverse is just as true, right? You don't have that vision. You're stepping into a Caitlyn trap. And you're getting the headshot to the dome, and you're done. You're getting the Wukong yep. Cyclone as well, the Karma Mantra cues as well. Overall, both of these teams really need to be careful when it comes to that vision. And we saw it game in the – I was going to say game one, but last game as well, right? Yeah. You don't have that vision. You're stepping into that fog of war. You're asking for a bad time. Yeah, and – you know, props to Roscoe Jesters at least for nullifying one of the picks from CGA. Mm. Uh, Swain is really going to struggle, so I don't expect Kaito, sorry, J. Real, to have much of an impact. I mean, I, on the desk, you know, I'd already told J. Real that I don't think mid lane is going to be that impactful. Uh, very much less so for CGA now, because good luck, Swain, actually reaching anybody. I mean, sure, you'll pop the ult and you'll sustain it through the Scion, because uh, Scion's melee and Wukong's melee. So I guess you don't die if that's relief, but you're also really going to struggle uh, to deal with with that range advantage. So Roscoe just, you know, they, they've got avenues to play through Echo. They're, it's not all doom and gloom. Um, I'm just very worried considering that they've drafted themselves an early game-ish composition and the fact that they don't like to play for early game and they like to go for 35 plus minute games, generally speaking, when they win. Uh, I just don't think it's a good match. <laughs> I know I, I think hope is going to be a very big word on this, on this, <laughs> this game, especially hope and flipping. It's, I, maybe maybe we see like a, a, a new paradigm shift coming through where rascal jesters all of a sudden are gonna like they're they're taking it to the man early on trying to get the game secured in the first 50 and you're already shaking your head you're already very doubtful I, 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 and I, i'm all for it i'm all for an echo i'm all for it it's just i have not seen any evidence to support that whatsoever so far <laughs> Yeah, it's very faith-based analysis coming out from me here where you're 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 more the the cold hard facts the numbers guy i'm like listen if there's a will there's a way there's a chance you know it's there's a there's a parallel universe out there where they do exactly that you know rj is the team that likes to just send it early you never know <laughs> i mean I, I have only so much faith echo and i just blew it all on axis here uh, I, I did just get notified as well by uh our production team that apparently we've got over a hundred thousand points riding on this game from the twitch chat and i am shocked these two teams are incredibly uh hard to predict here what on earth are we watching that replay Oh, some already went down. I'm guessing. So looking like the flash already got burnt by oh, wow, okay. some early shenanigans going on. I will, you know what? I'll admit, 2K of those channel points are mine. I um, okay, okay. I, I'm incredibly broke after the spring when I I literally put 20K onto Burning Core and they ended up losing in the last game and I cried a, quite a bit. And so I gotta get my money up. I'm not gonna lie. I got. I, I'm looking to just take Lexi's points at this point. So I already thank him in advance when uh, when CGA gets the dub. Okay, and you're going for CGA. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, we'll have to see how that goes. For now, though, Soul and Secret they are putting okay, down are... the pain, and this is what we do want to see from the Caitlyn Karma lane. You don't have to panic just yet, Echo. Um, <laughs> it's not the end of the world, but. I'm very hopeful for Roscoe Jesters, you know, that at least they're starting to play this right here. And look at Hachimecha as well. With that invade, with that vertical jungle, they really want to enable and empower this Caitlyn Karma lane. Yeah, that definitely feels like RJ's ball lane. They understand the assignment, right? They know for a fact that, you know, Nemo, if you get him low enough, once he comes around, not really much that he can do. And with this very aggressive poke comp lane, you can just shove them off the wave incredibly easily. They do exactly that. And they're looking good so far. Not looking good for my channel points, but you know, it's 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 very early on. And things can definitely change. For sure. And part of this is as a result of the drop, right? The fact that Rascal Justice have Sai on top side means that they can threaten the bot side, but CGA can't threaten their top side. Sion is notoriously difficult to dive early on. Uh, and even more difficult to actually get out without losing a member on the back end, even if you get the kill. And unfortunately, Camille does need some time to scale. So Rascal Jester's here. Like you said, they understood the assignment. The bigger question is whether or not they can actually execute onto it. Soul and Secret already shoving in, and there's no or very little sustain for Hybrid here to heal back up. 
not looking too good for him at the moment. It's jungle on the other side of the map, so no help is coming anytime soon. Already dropped traps getting dropped at their own turret. Got to be careful where you're stepping as well. First plate already about to go down into the hands of RJ. Three minutes is actually insane. And there's nothing they, they can't. They cannot step up to it. Nemo tries to go for anything here. He's going to get bursted to shreds right now. Yeah, and that's the scary part, right? Nemo doesn't dare to throw that dredge lock. Because if it lands, you're in there with Soul and Seeker. <laughs> Hybrid got to actually follow up. Hybrid doesn't have the right set of guns either uh, to follow up, unfortunately. So like we said before, Fellows has to play around pockets uh, of timing, effectively, when he's got the right sets of guns to come through. And Calibrum, uh, Severum, that is not the right pairing. You've got range, you've got healing, but you don't have any damage to actually kill anyone. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a whole lot of a whole lot of nothing really for you right there. But they'll have to wait for now as Kassin realizing uh, maybe Falling's going to need some help here. Looking like he's pathing his way on down there. No camps for him to clear as once he realizes that maybe he looks for a little bit of a gank. And if this lane, uh, I should say the last couple of lane indications have been anything, that uh, that minion wave is probably going to be under CJ's turret anytime soon. Okay. Hook does land, actually finds his way out of secret, but look at that. It's like oh, no. you, you pull yourself in and you just pull yourself in for a bad time. Hybrid as well. Half HP. We see the ignite getting dropped as well, and that's it. A very unfavorable trade at the end of the day. Hachimecha realizing that, you know, his sin's probably oh. in this jungle somewhere and it's going to spot him out. And that's going to be a lot of intel going into the hands of both teams here. Yeah, and even, even if Secret roams up here, there's not really oh, much punish you can look for. Yeah, oh, let's go. No, that's, rough. That's, that's rough, buddy. That's that's very rough. I feel like CG has forgotten what it is to play into a Caitlyn bot lane, whether it be Karma or Lux. You just don't get prior bot side, and you cannot contest this, right? The Secret roams up, and Hybrid and Nemo still can't go on Soul because Nemo would have died if he tried to go in. And that's already two plates almost gone. Gromp stolen away from Kassin here, and now... Rascal Jesters, they can finally start rotating their attention to that top side. Hybrid! Incredibly low. Ace going to go ahead and heal, though, with that Ignite being down. They can't reduce that healing coming out. And so ultimately, will stay alive. But yeah, this is a... I mean, it's a bit of a rude awakening right now, what it's like playing against the the, the Caitlyn Karma here. Like you said, seems like they kind of forgot it. And uh, yeah, their yeah. the memory is definitely being jogged right now. 20 CS up at five and a half. Okay, let's call it six minutes here, Echo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> look at that gold difference. That is a little bit rough. And granted, 500 gold isn't that important. Uh, it's what, a, a Duran's item plus some pots. But the problem is this early on, that extra long sword, those extra pots actually do matter quite a bit to control the lane, to control the objectives as well. And if we start seeing Soul and Secret roam up to contest uh, Herald at, pardon me, at eight minutes here, CGA can't do much. So for CGA, what are they doing elsewhere? Top side has gone even, mid lane has gone even, and I'd love to see Kassin look towards that mid lane a little bit, try and maybe find something on a Ziggs. They are kind of squishy, and maybe you can burst out a little bit. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> Watching him over the wall there, dude. Disrespect. First drag is online as well. It's going to be the mountain drag. Oh, wow. uh, okay, that should not have connected, but that, that's your average Nautilus hook there, I guess. Oh, well. Hitbox is big in the sun. Yeah, they just made themselves in. It's like your hook connected, and uh, you're about to be disconnecting from life itself. They're not actually that much damage coming out. Actually, another hook. Never mind. They might look to turn things around here. Atamecha incredibly low. The Vision oh. Empire does get dropped. First blood. Huge damage coming out. Nemo will pay the price in return, though, at the end of the day. We see the Infernal Bomb dropped as well. They will go one for one at the end of the day, though. But when you look at where the kills were distributed, Secret getting one and Kaito getting one, especially being first blood. I think CGA are a bit happier. Honestly, I, I think for Rascal Jesters, you're not worried about Kaito getting it as long as Recap's fine wave clearing. Now, let's keep in mind that all this got started by Nemo being popped over by a Blast Cone. And so they, they were like, okay, wait, Soul's on his own. Let's go in on this. And Hybrid's using the Gravitum so well in this fight. The reason why it doesn't go worse for them uh, for the side of CGA here is, is because early on, Roscoe Jester just could not gap close. And if anything, I think Nemo just got a little bit over eager in terms of trying to punish, in terms of looking to pick up more here. You should have just taken the one, backed off, and then you get control around that dragon pit as it stands. Instead, trading one for one just goes Roscoe Jester's way. They're continuing to get the lead. I'd say 2k by 14 minutes, you know, entire turret by 14 minutes. They're well on their way to doing that. 
Kassin, meanwhile, a little bit of cross map plays here. are going to look to secure themselves this hair roll here as that first drag does go into the hands of Rascal Jester with that pride. They were able to establish themselves. Shouldn't really be anyone there to, uh, yeah, no, no one really going to be there to contest. The rest of CGA going to roam on over as well just to assure the fact that they have this Herald in the bag. Going to go ahead and back off with that one. Plenty of time to place it. If you had to place your bets, where do you think that Herald's going? I think you might actually want to drop it either mid or bot uh, mm. if you're inside of CGA here. Bot lanes try and equalize the soul secret advantage that they are having um, on that bot side. And if you can set up a dive to kind of go along with it there, get the kill and soul onto secret, you can actually try and outpace that first turret take or into the mid lane where Kaito is already stronger uh, with that first blood. You want to maybe try and accelerate Swain a little bit so that you can just force fights at these early objectives. So I don't, I do think that is the riskier option. Like I said, I don't think Swain's going to be that impactful against a lot of the range that Rascal Jester brings to the table if they can set up first. Point down with Tell on that one. Double Sheen being picked up here for both Nap and Kassin, especially on Nap. That is going to hit like a truck. Definitely going to hurt into the know, but he is a tanky boy, so he should be okay. Meanwhile, bit of vision clearing going down here. Not too much action just yet, and I mean, kind of to be expected. You know, honestly, I count my lucky stars that we even got this aggression coming out from the bot lane early <laughs> on from Rasmus. So, right? Like, you gotta, you know, it's like, thank, thank you for that already. Like, that's very kind. Yeah, you know, hybrid. He's he gotta, gotta take what he can get. Bully him a little bit on those wards. Hit him with a thumbs up. Hey man, I think vision control is, is really important for hybrid right now. He's aware yeah. that I might get dove here. The the Ziggs bomb is ready to run on that out as well. And look at those trap placements. Again, hybrid has to play along the wall. That is the only place you can play. So <laughs> you're very diveable. And the rotate down from recap to get an early first turret wow. as well. You love to see it. And now you can just send Soul Secret mid and just rinse and repeat. Yep. 10 minutes in first turret down. Still plenty of platings to collect for the side of Rascal Jesters. They want to continue to just widen out this goal lead as it already stands. Doing a good job of it. Still holding on to that Herald. Can definitely still be placed anywhere, though, for CGA if they want to look to equalize things. But sooner or later, they are going to have to get rid of it. But for now, nothing too much really going down other than that. I mean, it, you know, at least they're not... Demo isn't like Azuka, right? He's just like, send the moment he sees anything, he just kind of sends it and goes and just like, it'll work out. No, he's like, you know, maybe this isn't the play. Back off, play safe. Don't want to do anything too risky. I feel like you're rubbing salt into my wound from last game right now. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not you're describing it's Nemo. not intentional. It's not intentional. <laughs> sure, sure it isn't. But yes, you, you are right. Nemo is playing this much more cerebrally, shall we say. Like he's yeah. not just running it down with the engage here. Uh, well, I didn't go that far. I didn't say to run it down, but I can't yeah, I mean, I mean, just say it. If you, if you say it, then, you know, it's like you're like the parent, you know, if you say, oh, okay, huge hexagon in the middle coming down, though, and they're going to wow. look to just collapse and take out Soul. That was absolutely huge. And that's the kind of plays that they need to make if they want to get back in this thing. And just with that, that little bit of gold extra being funneled into them, they're already now only about 1K down. They were looking towards around 2k down before and that's huge that's exactly what they gotta do to get back into this thing and that's exactly echo when you want to see your support sprinting at the enemy team when you can pull <laughs> off a play like that when you've got the numbers <laughs> advantage unfortunately though rascal just does react really really well so we're not going to see herald drop we're not going to see cj try and push that top side because everybody was already there hacha mitchell was rotating up as well uh, and recap can very quickly go down instead so they're just dropping it mid now because you already lost first turret here so you're just trying to crack the mid lane turret uh, best you can effectively. And CGA, you know, trying to maximize what they can out of what they have. And th the start here, you know, Nemo actually misses the hook. And I thought he was kind of shafted at this point here. But the flash from Nap, zero hesitation. And we already touched on the fact that, hey, when Camille goes for a Caitlyn, what you going to do? What sort of peel do you have as Roscoe Jester's here? You don't really have any. And this is something that they can repeat any time here, not just in team fights, but anytime Caitlyn is trying to split push, Camille, with the backing of Kaito and any other person, would be enough to kill Soul. Yeah, definitely. And with the Hexic Ultimatum as well, putting them in there, Kaito could just drop the Vision of Empire, and there's literally nowhere that Soul can go. We saw it there. It was just, it was just stuck. 
couldn't even move. And those are those beautiful plays. We also saw the death charges, right? They come out onto Seeker just to be certain that there's nothing Seeker can do, right? Can't try to give him some kind of a shield. Can't try to slow CGA down with a mantra Q. But with this drag up, Rascal Jets are looking to secure themselves that drag while the rest of the team here, Ace in the hole gets dropped, actually is going to curve and find its way, because Sin needs to be careful, very low, that bomb is going to connect, and they'll find themselves another kill, not quite going to find Kaito though, but ultimately, some beautiful zoning coming off from the entire gang of Rascal Jesters, they're like, hey, oh, do your thing, bro, we got this. And that's that sort of range poke we were talking about from Roscoe Jesters. If they get set up first, you saw the trap line there. CJ doesn't have a lot of avenues to get in there, and they just need to pull the trigger at that point. Nemo had the depth charge. They could have looked for that. Kaito didn't blow out either, so CGA just hesitating a little bit too much there. Uh, either you go for it, or you just back off completely. If you kind of do neither, you end up losing Dragon, and you lose a kill on the back end of things here. And... Part of it is also vision set up once again, Echo, right? The fact that, hey, they don't have mm -hmm. vision. All they see is I know at this point here. They know Dragon is being done, but look at the sheer amount of poke they're just eating the entire way. And because they don't have vision on any targets, Nemo doesn't want to depth charge a Scion. <laughs> and Kaito <laughs> kind of didn't want to pick that fight. By the time Kaito's in position and saying like, okay, maybe we can do this, uh, it's already too late because Sin has been popped. Goes down. I'm not gonna lie. I'm already. I've already got the stream open in the background. I'm just collecting the channel points because I. <laughs> I'm a little worried that my 2K <laughs> is uh, down the drain at this point, and with <laughs> very, very oh. fitting a pause as well, so I can reflect on uh, what I've done wrong when it came to where I placed <laughs> my bets. That's why I don't, I don't. I don't gamble. I don't do none of that because it. I'm not lucky like that. <laughs> Echo, Echo, you can't be doing this every time your team starts to lose. You send your inside man, you know, tell them, hey, pause it out, time out, time out, time out. I, I, need, I need to talk to my guys for a second. Coach Echo over here, man. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't CGA, aren't like actually, <laughs> CGA aren't actually that, that far behind right now. I mean, yes, they are falling behind. But keep in mind, we, sp we touched so much on the composition and the way they operate. Roscoe just is, is expected to win early. CGA just kind of need to hold on. And losing a couple of turrets early is expected, unfortunately, against the Caitlyn Ziggs. The bigger question to me, Echo, is what happens when those outer turrets go down? Can CGA mm. then find ways to flank and catch those squishier targets like the Caitlyn, like the Ziggs? If they can continue to do what they did in that top side here, Echo, I think your, your channel points are still fairly safe at that point. Will it? RMC has said it. There's still an opportunity. But yeah, it's true. We did see right... If they get, it's like we so also want access to. Get, yeah, that's that's fair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, yep. You know what? Maybe uh, and I'm a little worried, but yeah, we we did see right. The moment they get, it's like we said on draft. The moment they get on top of that Caitlyn, there there there's no saving her. It, it just gets absolutely blown to bits. They can do the same thing to the Karma as well. Wukong the Scion, not so much, but you know if they they zone them off correctly, they can definitely still make things happen. I think the biggest thing, once again, is just that vision control, right? We touched on it during draft. We touched on it during game one. We touched on it during draft of game one. It's huge. It's huge this time around, too. It's like you said, right? They just see I know. They walk up. The whole Rascal Jester squad is like, hey, hey what's, what's, what, what, are you here for the draft? No, that's not. You're dead now. <laughs> and, like, they just send them off, run into their tower for the hills. Like, that vision control needs to be on point if they want to be able to, uh, to pull this thing back. Yeah, and Echo, you, you mentioned, you know, uh, I know and Hacha Mecha, the Scion and the Wukong. Well, for CGA, that's not Nap's problem. That's not Kasin's problem. That's for Kaito, Hybrid, and Nemo to deal with. And we already said that for Kaito, unfortunately, you're probably not reaching that back line. So yeah. what is Kaito's job here? Well, it's to kind of stop the Scion and Wukong from having any impact in the game, right? The, you, you, when your alt's running, you build a uh, Rylai's, pardon me, uh, to just apply the slow and suddenly you're just that hybrid with that Aphelios just ripped through them in that front to back. And the back end problem, that's all on Nap. That's all on Kassin. Even if Nap and Kassin can't kill the Caitlyn, just pushing them out of the fight is kind of good enough for the most part there. Granted, you don't want to both die for no reason. So at least, you know, try and trade even if you're going that deep into enemy lines. Yeah. Well, speaking of trading, we're going to trade our time in here for a quick break as we wait for a... Uh... The, the, uh, the stream to catch on up, not catch on up, to get back in the game. Lord knows what they're trying to fix right now. This is definitely not just me stalling time so that I can uh, feed, feed some info now that I've picked RMC's brain. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
and we're back ladies and gentlemen oh, and uh wow we're just <laughs> we're really just gonna cut back to that huh okay well ah uh, kasin uh biting the dust there it's gonna go down deep within rascal jester territory uh i pretty sure i told them to not do that i don't know what's going on there yeah, we were just talking about, about diving the backlight. I meant together, Nap and Kasin, <laughs> not solo. Uh, we, we do get a replay to see exactly how this started up. And honestly, this is just your typical jungler overextending into enemy territory there. Keep in mind, you've already lost the bot side turret, and your mid side turret has been sieged up here. So Kasin really has no business walking in with no yeah. backup. Sure, you get the red buff, which denies experience and gold, but you also got killed, which gives experience and gold and i believe <laughs> that at this point in the game still a champion is worth more than a buff <laughs> yeah really just like top 10 worst times to walk into the jungle there like the whole rj squad is just pulling up just barely uh, misses them doesn't see it coming thinks oh cheeky red buff steal no a cheeky life steal actually coming out from rj speaking of stealing also going to go ahead and steal away the tier one in this mid lane here from cga that's another tier one down one more to go in this top lane unless it's already gone i don't believe it no it is still standing strong about half hp but uh not much longer <laughs> not if this long. rift hill, <laughs> yeah if this rift hill has anything to say about it not much longer and this so rift herald with caitlin and ziggs is actually completely disgusting because you saw that they just took the turret before shelly yep. even charged and now wow. you're going for the mid late uh, for the inner turret top side cga can't kill Harold fast enough, can't stop the push either. Your only chance of CGA to do anything on this top side is to try and pick a fight with numbers advantage, and it's already gone. Just one satchel charge would take that. Yep. It's going to go down, down it goes. Now the oh. question is, can they stop it? It's not looking oh. too likely. Double Cyclo going in, two knockups. Oh, so close to Gale Force. Almost to the of Fate, but the Magic Q will do it instead. Hybrid oh. low two. Down he goes to the haste and the whole Kassin. The only man standing in this turret won't be standing too much longer either. We are 16 minutes into the game, and top lane does not exist anymore. Uh, they don't take the inhibitor, which is important uh, here right now, Echo, because you won't get supers pushing in. But I'm just more shocked than what we just saw happen. And the fact that Kaito didn't use his ultimate like as a swain you're only tanky when your ult is running if it's not running you're not actually tanky and we already said you know the herald set up into a caitlin into a ziggs bomb it's just so so good and rascal jesters they know what they're doing the moment that goes down hachamecha pulls the trigger and kaito right here just very very unfortunate okay that's why i didn't he didn't even have time to pop his ult he just got chunked thing after thing after thing and perfect timing from secret on that mantra queue there to pop kaito the moment he came out of stasis yeah speaking of that though kaito maybe he's looking for something now though to get sped up there but no to no avail nothing coming out there just yet kasin once again deep in enemy territory bro you need to take control of your own jungle first before you look to take control of rascal gestures like there are more pressing issues at the moment speaking of pressing issues it's going to be this drag that's up in five seconds if rascal gestures can take this one that will be putting themselves onto soul point sin already there though looking this maybe started up here now it's just gonna have it made it out so that it can start poking out perhaps the rascal gesture squad but it's not looking too likely if they are gonna buy their time a lot of caitlin traps getting dropped on down really just limiting the move that comes up the flash though from them gonna yeah. try and go in with the hook they get the hook but that's really about it he's gonna eat the dirt down he goes a lot of damage out of the hacha mecha but he's gonna use that ghost to escape flash over the wall won't enough. quite find the kill there though dragon Reset. getting lower and lower because you gotta get this drag now man they are gonna get that heartbreaker over the wall ace in the hole won't find the kill hybrid left to die down he goes and so ultimately they get the drag but they lose three members trade offer you get one dragon <laughs> and you lose and i get four members and potentially oh no, no no sorry Echo, we, they can't even go for baron baron hasn't spawned yet we're at 19 minutes right now mate like this is just a an absolute slaughter from the side of brasco dressers i'm sorry everything i said before the pause echo i take it back cga are well and truly up a creek with no paddle right now and the sickest part is did you see how little damage cga is doing in these fights right now look at kaito going in he pops his out sure great you're not dying but you're also not pumping out damage and hybrid as well 
you're doing some damage to Hachimecha, but this is not why you pick the Aphelios. You pick the Aphelios for the Chainsaw Chakrams or for that big Infernum, which absolutely pops everyone. Instead, most of Roscoe Jester is still pretty healthy after that particular fight. And so what is CJ going to do? You can't deal with them in Siege. You are trying to look for a pick, but in a full 5v5 right now, you just can't match what Roscoe Jesters have with the massive gold lead that they have. Yeah, I, I think the Caitlyn traps especially, it's just what zoned them off so perfectly. You saw, right, Nemo had to go ahead and flash to get that hook going. The rest of his team like, dude, we can't follow you, bro. Like, we step into this trap, we are literally dead. We're done for. That headshot damage is going to hurt. They're going to chunk us down. And so Hybrid had to pretty much just default to just continuing to attack the drag so they can at least secure something. And with that damage just missing, they just they drop like flies one by one by one by one. And then they have to back off. And they, I'm just, yeah, it's like you said, you get the drag, but... At what cost, really? Was it was it worth it? Like, was it worth getting the Infinity Stone? Like, you sacrificed your whole team for it. <laughs> yeah, you just lose everything. And this is the time where you want to get, that was it the, the Time Stone? To, to just kind of rewind a little yeah. bit? Because CGA's, honestly, right before the pause, they were only 2k down. They were fine. And we just went from 2k to 8k, or 7,500 <laughs> in the span of, what, 5 minutes? Echo, this yeah. is a nightmare. And for Roscoe Jesters, I kind of want to see them just brute force Baron at this point with this massive gold lead they have and watch a CJ can't do anything. And then we already saw the Herald push. The Baron push is every bit as potent. They are so far ahead right now in terms of damage. They're about a half an item to a full item up across the AD carry and mid positions, and those matter because Recap and Soul right now are the ones with massive poke. I know kind of matters too because look at that. Second item, Thornmill. CGA aren't doing My anything God. to the Scion. He's tankier than a turret. Yeah, for real. Listen, I need another pause, man. Clearly, something was lost in translation with my inside, man. They gave, they fed him all the wrong info because CJ <laughs> is not doing what I told him to do right now. They are just getting absolutely just demolished in every lane right now. Bot inhibitor is going to go down as well. Top inhibitor is still standing, but not for long because that wave is already pushing into that top lane, but it's looking like Rascal Justice are going to go ahead and pivot their interest here to this mid turret. Want to get rid of that as well. They can open the map up even more with that. Well, not even open up the map, really. It's just open up the base of CGA itself. The map is already wide open. This time around, mm -hmm. it's Rascal Justice Oyster, it feels like. Yeah, and look at how Roscoe just are positioning here as well. Recap and Soul are hovering bot side. They don't, there's no chance for CGA to get that flank. There are wards behind them here. They're playing this so clean. And this is painful to watch if you're a fan of CGA because they're playing it to the best of their abilities. But because of that one slip up in five minutes, well, Nap might just go down here. Yep, Hexagon and Melly gonna get dropped, allow <laughs> Nap to escape on that one. Close call, definitely, but they're just gonna take the inhibitor, and there's nothing CGA can do, and they know it. They have to just watch as it goes down. Gotta just pop the battle song as well to get everyone on out of there, reset, and I would be very hard-pressed to not believe that they're just gonna send it right over to Baron. Yeah, um, I mean, they could go for Dragon, but at that That's point, Roscoe just is trolling us at that point. I mean, they have trolled <laughs> us before, but... My goodness, Echo, they look clean this game. All the questions we had for them coming into this, right? Oh, Roscoe Jesters is a late game team. Oh, they don't do anything early and mid. Well, I don't know what sort of conversation they had, but their coach is obviously actively trying to change that. When you pick something like a Caitlyn Carmen, you have no choice but to play early. And when they finally do, my goodness, they look absolutely amazing. Drag up in 26 seconds we are seeing rj pivoting to the spare right now clearing out this vision want to make sure that no one has eyes on them and i'm curious to see if they look to do it they had to send nap cj had to send nap into that bot lane right take care of those double super minions that are spawning and there they go they are going to start up this baron i don't think there's really a universe where cga can do much to contest them really maybe get vision on stuff they just they know that they're doing it how many members are there so they can try and find something because kasin about to step up at the moment he does he's probably just gonna go down look at that yeah already they were expecting to find something there not quite gonna see anything into fruition though and down goes he's trying Baron. oh he tried and oh. You, know, you know you know i i respect yeah i respect that honestly the yeah. dash flash ult over the wall and you gotta you know at this point it's the hail mary play you gotta try something at the very least you get the drag it is what it is 
Yeah, I mean, you've got double supers pushing in every lane right now, right? So you have to stop the Baron <laughs> hybrid. My god. Gonna dash away. He might still die here. Oh, oh my, my goodness. god, that was close. Ah, there we go. Kaito finally dropping that demonic ascension. I know. Taking a lot of damage from those turrets. Nemo going in. That was more of an Ozuka play there because <laughs> down you go. Your turret follows suit. Oh, Your mid goodness. laner follows suit as well. Your second turret goes down too. And then if you gotta find something, now's the time. But you're not. Nap is taking an eternal slumber right now an extended nap dare i say and so is their nexus they chase them all the way to the fountain and rascal jesters absolutely just run away with the game my god okay that that ending brought a tear to my eye could i request somebody screenshot that please the minion <laughs> uprising at the end as well with all of them just piling in i was just watching cga cj could not even reach rascal jester at the end because of the sheer Jeez. press of the minions pushing in and Echo, this might be the time for Roscoe Jesters to wake back up. Lost split in spring, we had a similar thing where Roscoe Jesters were off to a very bad start. And then come second round Robin, come third round Robin, well, they pushed their way to third place by the end of playoffs here. And it feels like Roscoe Jesters might be making that resurgence once again. Yeah, definitely. I got. I got. I kind of called it that. Maybe we're in a universe where Rascal Jester looked to push the envelope early. True. Who, true. I, I might. I might have just swapped us in this. I might just shoved us all in there real quickly. Like, hey, we're in it. We're in the different universe now. But it, we'll, we'll we'll get some more choice words from uh from Jay Real. I'm sure he wants to talk about it a bit more. So let's do just a small break real quick, and when we're back, we'll be on the desk with Jay Real. Oh, we're just gonna go straight there. I'm trolling. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was pulling my own rascal Jester there. Like, what's going on there? I just, I was like, let's, we're gonna take things slow. It's like, now nah, let's just get right to it, mate. It's it's crazy. It's crazy stuff happening. Rascal Jester's seeming like they might be back. You know, maybe they've uh, they finished their vacation. You know, they've had their time off to chill out, let teams pick up wins. Now they're here to play. Rip CJ. I guess is is all I can say. Like, it's it's uh, I've. I can't tell if CGA could have done better or if Ross Jesters really did just come through. But let's get into the draft first of all because I feel like there was a lot of interesting stuff that happened in this game. Let's kick it off. RMC, talk to me about Caitlyn Karma. Okay, so Caitlyn Karma, like we said in draft, you know, very strong pushing lane in the bot side. There are very few lanes that can handle it in terms of pressure here. So we expected them to win out. Uh, something I didn't touch on in draft, but became very evident as the game played on, was the zigs in the mid lane for even faster pushing. And the whole point of the Roscoe Jester's comp was to build a lead, as big a lead as early as possible here. And they executed that flawlessly. CGA, on the other hand, with their composition, the way they kind of wanted to play it was they had to play around that bot side a little bit more here. Uh, not to win it, but just to keep it alive. Aphelios, Nautilus, we saw moments of hope, right? With the Gravitum gun, you know, we saw some good picks from Nemo. That's how it needs to be played. But the problem was with the vertical jungle split as well. Kassin wasn't willing to sack enough of his jungle to protect this bot lane. And when So and Secret got unlocked, that was when everything really started to snowball for the side of Rascal Jesters. Yeah, and CJ just couldn't close it back. And I will say some newer picks coming through. Scion there, Ziggs as well. Echo, do you feel like Russell Jesters have kind of... We, we, we talked about them maybe being a little bit behind the meta. Do you feel like they've now surpassed the meta and found some new stuff? I definitely, I like what I'm seeing. I'll give them that. It was, it was a very nice comp coming out. The Scion, am I sold on it? <laughs> uh, not so much. I wasn't really too... It, it wasn't bad. It was great either. I got to say the Ziggs pick was definitely very good, especially, I mean, the amount of siege potential they got out of that as well. We saw, right? They, they took out bot turret, right? I think it was about 10 minutes in. They pivot up into the mid lane, get rid of that. They pivot into the top lane and they managed to get all three turrets in quick succession too. It wasn't like they just, you know, they came in they're like, they get one, they leave. Oh, they're just like, get next, get next, go next, go next. And so overall, I it was very it was a very nice comp to see. I really I hope we get to see more zigs of re, uh, more recap on zigs. I hope we see more of this Russell Jesters. You know, I, I hope you guys can both agree. I, I want to see this Russell just come through because this this Russell Jesters is the the number three sport, maybe even number two sport kind of Russell Jesters. Maybe not number two, but but definitely competing for that number three. Whereas previously it has felt like they were a little bit lackluster. How do you see CGA though? Because I feel like we always talk about CGA being anywhere from 7th to 4th, maybe even 3rd. RMC Echo, has your opinion on that changed? 
Uh, I, I will say, before we get too hyped up on Rascal Jesters here, I think part of the fact that they won as dominantly as they did comes from the fact that they changed their play style so wildly. It's a complete 180 from what we're used to. I think CGA got caught off guard. It's not cheese, but it has that same effect, the first team that has to deal with it here. So I don't think this is representative of CGA's performance whatsoever here. I think they just got caught very flat-footed and fell behind in terms of pacing and tempo. I think once teams are aware that this is a possibility... Well, there's a reason why we saw Caitlyn fall out of meta. She does still struggle to have any place outside of mid-game. And if teams just play a bit more safely in the early game, uh, you know, protect their bot lanes, maybe pick something uh, that can try and match that Caitlyn early, things like uh, Ash comes to mind as well. Not something we commonly see, but is available. I think that Roscoe Jesters will start to struggle a little bit more as well. So for CGA... As far as I'm concerned, nothing has changed. They are still anywhere from 4th to 7th on any given day, depending on who they're up against and what they run into. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to see how they do play out. If Rascal Jesters can keep this form, obviously looking good for their prospects coming through later in the split. We'll have to see, though. Obviously, notoriously, they did go 13-1, and one, I do believe, in the, se in the second two-round Robins in spring. We'll see if that form does continue this time around. But it was a pretty good game for them and a nice win. And CJ... Commiserations, and obviously shout out to the guys in chat the bet because I think I heard there was a hundred k points. Echo, were you one of the ones in that chat? I did. I put two k on the line, and I'm looking at my balance right now, and I've got two hundred and sixty three points. So uh, nice. I'm gonna go well, to bed after this and cry a little. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, let's round up the dates actions then before you do go anywhere. V3 versus Sengoku was what we kicked off with, and obviously Sengoku coming through strong. V3 put up a little bit of a fight here and there, but Sengoku just overall way too powerful. DFM versus the Hawks was next, and that one was a little bit closer. Hawks actually really testing DFM in those earlier stages, but DFM with better macro control, just out winning and closing that one out early as per usual. Good predictions to Master Swan. Burning Core Axis were next, and to be fair, we thought this would be quite a close game, but Burning Core actually pulled out all the stops. They really performed on today's day, and Axis didn't really show up, so another big win there for Burning Core, taking them a little bit ahead of the Axis group, which obviously is going to be a good contention around that 4th to 7th spot. And then for the last match of the day, Rascal Jester's finding some form and picking up the win over CGA. So, with that being said, that is all of our day's games, all of the results on your doors. But let's play... My favorite game. You know, mess or impress? I want to know who your mess was, who was your impress. We'll start with the mess, we'll go through all the messes, and then we'll do the impress. We'll go RMC, Echo, then me, and we'll do that once again. So, RMC, who was your mess for today? Ozuka, hands down. Like, <laughs> there's no question about it. Fair play, fair right. play, fair play. Quick, short, snappy, Echo KO. What's your verdict? Gotta, gotta second that one, Ozuka, man. I don't, I don't know what he was doing, bro. I like... Don't do it again. That's all I got to say. Don't, don't do it again. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. My mess personally is actually going to be the drafting of V3. Wasn't really in love with the two half comp. They had the early game. Then they had the late game. Didn't really match up on the play style. I wasn't too happy about that. But I also just didn't want to give Azuka three uh, messes. That would be a bit harsh. But onto the flip side. Onto the impress. Who really showed up today? RMC. Uh, that's a tough one, because I think team-wise, I think Roscoe Justice as an entire team showed up. I love the, the turn they've had, but I also really like Utapon's Kalista play um, in that bot lane mm. in the DFM versus Hawks game. So uh, in terms of individual, I'd say Utapon. In terms of team-wide, I'd give it to Roscoe Justice. Okay, and then for you, Echo KO? Team-wide is also Roscoe Justice. I got to say, individual-wise, I actually have to give mine a loser. I'm not going to lie. His, the pike. Was, a, it wasn't something that we expected, right? We we, we talked about oh, he's, he's a very prevalent Nautilus player, and that's pretty much all that we've been seeing coming out from. So we were curious to see once it got banned what he was going to default to. And we thought like maybe something like the Alice or something like that. But no, he's like, hey, watch me with this pick. And even if he didn't accomplish exactly what he was looking to do in lane, his the impact he had outside of the lane and just in general the entirety of the rest of the game – it was it was very refreshing it was very nice to see it was very well executed and overall i was quite impressed fair enough i'm gonna give mine to ross just as well i think they really performed and i think it, it's it's one of those ones where you know we were expecting them to maybe come in a little bit lower they have been having a few off days in a row really popped off today and showed how good they truly can be and i also want to say shout out to recap as well I quite like the six i thought that was a nice little addition i think it really switched up how they played so that's my personal preference. That's been the impresses. That's been the messes. That's how the day has gone for the LJL. Another banger to write down in the records. And don't worry, 
We're not done just yet. Lots and lots of games to still come. We will be back on Friday. We'll see you there for day seven, the last day of the first round, Robin. Do not miss the next one on Friday.